Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back or welcome to my podcast, Rewired to Inspire. I am your host, Jesse Brown, and I am very excited to be jumping on the microphone with you all for episode number 172. If you missed my last episode, number 171, I chatted with you guys about you need this one thing to have a healthy relationship. That might have been one of my favorite episodes thus far that I've ever recorded. Because for me, after I recorded that episode, I just had a huge mirror of recognition of how far I've come with that subject. And I think whenever we can have those self-awareness moments for ourselves and we can recognize how much work we've put in, how much we've grown, how far we've come, it just makes us feel a little proud of ourselves. And I don't think that we give ourselves enough credit for all the things that we've gone through, for all the things that we've overcome, and for all the work that we've put in. And so I hope that in listening to that that episode, maybe you can recognize how far you've come. And maybe even after today's episode, you can have a little ounce of that. And even if these subjects in particular don't really bring that up for you, I encourage you to just take a moment and validate for yourself how far you've come in your life. This doesn't have to do with today's episode, but I do think that I want to share very quickly because it's very heavily on my heart. I just spent the last 20 minutes or so reflecting in my journal and a huge thing that's been on my mind lately has been my perception of self. For some reason, it's just been a big theme in my consciousness to the point where I feel like it's keeping me up at night. I don't know what started the trigger or even really what the message is trying to tell me but I've just been hyper aware of how I view myself lately and I think that when anytime we go through an instance like this my approach anyways is to ask myself what lesson is this trying to teach me because I think it's easy in those moments to get sucked in and to catastrophize and to end up potentially in a dark place But if we can always have that narrative in our mind of what is this trying to teach me? How am I growing through this? I think it just takes a little pressure off of our shoulders and can help us to get through challenging times. My goal of this episode and relevance to today is to hopefully also give you guys some tangible techniques and ways to support yourself when you're in maybe a different state of mind. And so today we're going to be talking about, and if you listen to Tuesday's episode, I did already give a little sneak peek into what today is going to be about, but I'm going to give you guys ways to calm yourself down when you're angry, when you're agitated, when you're upset, when you're triggered, and really just ways that we can calm ourselves down. I do just want to preface before going into this, these are obviously just tips and tricks and techniques that I've used for myself, that I've learned about, that I've taught to clients that my therapists have taught me, this is definitely not a one size fits all. And I definitely, as always, want to reiterate that this is not a substitute for going to get any kind of professional help. If you are really struggling with dealing with any of the things I talk about in today's episode, I hope you know how worthy you are of going and getting proper support and care with this. But I just like to give you guys some examples of things that might be helpful. But as always, I just want to know that, again, it's not a one size fits all. Hopefully these help you, but if they don't, I don't want you to be hard on yourself and judge yourself more because we each need unique things. These are just the ones that I have found to have the most benefit and I've seen the most results with these ways. So without further ado, let's dive into episode 172. So to kind of start us off, I was sitting here and as I was reflecting about today's episode, I'm like, you know, we've all had those experiences where we feel or have felt mad, we've felt angry. And sometimes when we recognize that we're feeling mad or angry or upset, shame starts to kick in and inevitably sometimes it makes it worse. I know I've definitely experienced that before where I've been angry and I know that I'm angry and it makes me more angry because I'm frustrated with myself because I don't like feeling that way. And I think just talking about anger for a moment in general anyways, I think it has such a negative context to it. When we think of our emotions and our circle of emotions, which I can see above me, for some reason when we think of anger, 
we view it as this really negative thing. I think how we display anger is what can lead to it being a negative thing. Also, this pumpkin behind me on video makes it look like I have a little um, stem popping out of my head and I just think that that's hilarious. I probably should have designed or thought out a little better where I put that <laughs> squirrel brain. Anyways, anger. I think the way that we display anger is why it can get a negative reputation. But just like all of our other emotions, anger represents a lot of things. If anything, it's just showing that there's a lot of energy and a lot of needs in you that need to be tended to and need to be loved on. But I think that our response to our emotions dictate a lot of things. They dictate how long we will feel them, how, how we will process them, how we come out of those situations. And so the reason that this episode surfaced for me is because this last Saturday, I woke up in a snow white, around her animals, life is good mood. Singing, humming, I made homemade squash soup, I made homemade crepes, I cleaned the house. I cleaned, like just, I had a phenomenal morning. And then a couple little things happened that I won't get into because it's, it's irrelevant, but they caused internal frustration. And once I shifted into that frustrated state of mind, I had a really hard time coming out of it. And sometimes, you know, we say we're gonna brush it off, we say we're gonna get out of it, but when we know that we're angry, we know we can't shake it, it makes it worse. Especially when I tried these techniques and I tried self-soothing and I tried to ask myself why. And so there is a part of the anger that's like, you just have to feel it. If it's showing up, if there's an emotion showing up, it's showing up for a reason. It's not just there for fun. I've said this many times on here, our emotions have a message. Me being angry in that moment was likely because a need was not being met. Something was triggered. And until I was able to identify what it was that was triggered and talk it out, that's when it was able to get soothed. But as someone who doesn't really experience in particular a lot of anger, I typically just feel a lot of sadness and shutdown. I was mad at myself for being angry. And there's nothing worse that we can do for our nervous systems than be angry at it for expressing its needs. Imagine a child telling you that it's angry and you shaming that child and telling them that they shouldn't be angry, they shouldn't feel that way, they need to snap out of it, they need to be happy, they need to put on a go lucky face. That child's gonna suppress that. But as adults, we do the exact same thing. But for some reason, when we put it into a perspective of being a child, we're like, oh, I would never do that. But yet we do that to ourselves. And I did that to myself. And that state that I was in is something referred to as hyper arousal. I've talked to you guys many times about something called the window of tolerance. When we're in our window of tolerance, that is basically when we're in our homeostasis state. We're in our rest and digest. We're in that parasympathetic nervous system. We are calm. When we are either in our hyper, meaning our heightened state, or hypo, meaning our kind of free state, we are in a state of survival. This can happen like this. We might not necessarily know what the trigger was. Sometimes it can just happen and take over. When that happens, and when we go into those hyper and hypo arousal states, this thinking part of our brain right here, the prefrontal cortex, our hippocampus, it goes offline. When that goes offline, our logic brain goes out the window because our body is then in a state of, I need to defend, I need to protect, I don't need to have my thinking brain, I need to just stay alive and keep myself safe. And so as much as me being with myself, there wasn't actually any threats, my body associated some kind of trigger with the need to defend. Now, mind you, this has been wired in us for centuries and centuries and centuries. Our bodies don't know the difference of thousands of years ago when we had to fight off a tiger and that tiger being an email that comes in, being a phone call, being a family member. Right? It doesn't know the difference. It responds. It's been wired and primed to respond the same way. And so when we're in that hyper arousal state, it can feel very daunting. It can feel very overwhelming. 
right? Our heart's beating faster. We're breathing shallow. We're overwhelmed. In those moments, the last thing we need is to suppress and to feel more shame. If anything, we need to lean into that. I remember I used to have clients that come in and their tendency would be to go into that hyperarousal state. We'd be mid-session and they're like, I just want to punch a wall. And I'm like, okay, what can we do to get that same sensation while keeping you safe? Obviously, there's a part of your body that's craving that, that's needing that. How can we give you that in a realistic way? You're obviously not going to go punch my wall. So maybe you punch a pillow. Maybe you scream into a pillow. Maybe you punch a couch, right? We feel these urges. And as kids, sometimes we outburst and we do them. And even as adults, you'll see this. All it is is just a need in our system that comes out in sometimes ways that aren't appropriate. And that's why I wanted to talk about ways to calm yourself down when you're in this state proactively. Because when we get into that state, you're almost just like... This is the worst feeling in the world. And I also want us to just form a better relationship with anger. If you've never seen the movie Inside Out, whenever I talk about anger, I just see that cartoon image in my head. And I go into my own consciousness and I pretend like I have that little bloop up there too and I just want to make friends with it. Because that's like that one cartoon character that everyone's like, oh, boo, anger. But think of how much good he did even in that movie for her mind. Think of how much good anger does for us. If we didn't have anger, we wouldn't express certain things. We wouldn't feel certain things. But when it takes over and it feels like too much, that's when shame can really start to set in and we form that negative relationship. So here I am just vouching for our emotion anger because I think that it's one that can cause a lot of frustration. And I know that I don't really allow myself to feel anger and it then ends up building up and bubbling up and coming up in other ways. And so I'm gonna to start to lean into it more and practice some of these techniques that I'm sharing with you all because I think it's important that I practice what I preach, but also that we all start to just find healthier ways to cope. Okay, so the first thing that I wrote down, the first way that we can calm ourselves down is to validate that you're feeling that way for a reason and that it will pass. And to stop judging and shaming it. I think that I kind of talked and touched on that in, in my intro to the ways, but I think that validating that you're feeling that way for a reason is just one of the most permission giving things that we can do. Because when we don't allow ourselves to feel the capacity that like, okay, I'm not just feeling this for fun. There's a reason beneath this sensation I genuinely believe it just gives us a little bit of grace to be like, okay, how can I now feel this in a safe way? But if we just feel anger and then we want to push it away, it's really not doing us any good. And in that moment on Saturday when I felt that way, I did just keep telling myself, this will pass. You're not going to be angry forever. But when we suppress it, it just prolongs the feeling. And sometimes in those moments, we need to just accept it, accept it for what it is, feel it. And before I, I kind of keep stopping myself because some of the things I'm going to say are other ways, which I'll get into right now. But that is the first thing is to just validate that you're feeling anger for a reason. It's showing up for a reason. Maybe it is past trauma that's in your body that's trying to come up. Maybe you have certain triggers that you haven't identified. And so this again is where I encourage you to maybe work with a mental health professional because if you're jumping into that hyper arousal state frequently and your window of tolerance isn't very big, you likely don't have a lot of capacity to feel safe in your body. And so that's when I definitely encourage you to go work with somebody because there are ways to support you through that. It is not normal to feel angry all the time. It is normal based on your experiences, but other realities are possible. Right, other ways of living, that's not a very good quality of life if you're just jumping from state to state, which I know because I've lived there before and it's exhausting and it's overwhelming and you don't really have the best quality of life. And so just know that it can and will get better over time and with proper support. Okay, as I need to do right now, number two, notice your breathing. When we jump into either of those states, hyper or hypo, our breathing is dysregulated. 
There's a reason that they say that our breathing and breath work is one of the most powerful things that we can do. This is the first thing that monks learn either when they are children or when you go to, to learn to be a monk. This is the first thing that they teach you is how to breathe. Think about it. What's the one, first thing that we do when we come into this world and the last thing that we do when we leave? What is the one thing we can't live without? Does our breath. It dictates everything. The times that I notice myself super stressed and I come back to my breath, I'm like, oh, you were shallow breathing? I'm breathing very quickly. Your body interprets how you breathe as a signal of, hey, there's probably maybe a threat going on. Like, Jesse's breathing really heavily. Jesse's really short of breath. Like, something's going on. Our body picks up on those cues. And so it starts to act accordingly. Okay, well, I'm going to get your heart to beat faster. I'm going to get everything ready to go just in case there's an emergency. Try your best in those moments. I know it sounds dumb. I know it sounds silly because it's talked about so much. But when you're angry, the power of taking a deep breath is just so overlooked. And so that is the second way. Number three. Express how you're feeling out loud or maybe to someone or to yourself. Basically, try to get out of your head. When we're angry and we stay in our head and we're reiterating those thoughts and we close everybody out and we shut the world down, we don't want to talk about it and we want to suppress it, it's doing nothing. It's keeping it in our body. If we're able to outwardly express that, either through our words, through emotion, through writing, through something... It's just going to help it to get out of our body. Like I said, anger is a strong energetic feeling, sensation that we have in our body that needs to come out. And so talking it out loud sometimes allows us to make logical sense of what's going on. On Saturday, when I finally was able to communicate vulnerably to my partner how I was feeling, the walls came down and we started to actually have a good conversation. But before that, we were just butting heads because I wasn't being vulnerable and truthful about what was bothering me, which again ties in very nicely to Tuesday's episode. But if you don't have someone around, sometimes it's just vocalizing it to yourself. You know, I'm angry and I'm frustrated because the dog knocked over the water and then this happened and then I got this email that I wasn't ready for and insert thing here, right? We all have just different things and sometimes we have less capacity on certain days depending how much sleep we got, depending how much food we ate, depending on how met our needs are. So many factors can lead into this. But when we can pause and take a second and outwardly express how we're feeling, it can just help take that pressure out of our mind, get it into the real world so we're able to process it, dissect it, and see what then needs to happen. But if we keep it all bottled up and in our system and in our body, first of all, if there are people around you, they can't read your mind. They don't know what's wrong. And so if you're able to lean into vulnerability and share that, maybe those people can help you. And maybe you can help yourself. Okay, number four. Asking yourself what could have caused it. And then I wrote down in brackets, revisit this after you calm down. Sometimes in the moment when we ask ourselves what caused something or what's wrong or what do you need, In those moments, again, when our thinking brain's offline, it almost feels impossible to answer those questions. You're like, I don't know, or I wouldn't be in this state in the first place. And then it just makes us more angry because we're shameful at ourselves because we don't have a reason. And so as much as maybe I wouldn't encourage you to do this one in the moment of being triggered, I would definitely encourage this one after. Revisit what it could have been that caused it. And sometimes in the moment, I do need to ask myself, why is it that's Everything is bothering me. Why is my capacity so short? Why am I so frustrated today? And it just allows me, again, that rational part of my brain to come back online when I'm speaking out loud or writing it down to be like, oh, I'm just really hungry. I'm just really tired. I'm just frustrated today. I'm just having a hard time. My capacity is full. I'm burning out. I'm stressed out. I'm overwhelmed. And it can just help us to connect the dots. Okay. I have three left for you guys. Number five, this one was very, very helpful for me on Saturday. And that's to notice where you feel it in your body. I personally feel anger very tightly in my chest. 
and in my throat. When I'm angry, it's like, oh, it just gets tight in my, in my system and I feel it in my hands. It's like, I wanna just like punch something, right? And again, I don't feel anger very often. So when I do, I'm very curious about where I feel that, why I feel that, where it's coming from, da 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 da. But I think noticing where you feel it in your body and then bringing your awareness to where that is. Sometimes holding that place on our body can be helpful. I used to do this with my clients all the time. They'd be like, I feel sad. Show me where you feel sad in your body. Maybe it's their heart. I'm like, okay, go hold your heart. Just go there for a minute. Love on that spot for just a second. And sometimes these little things on a surface level, they sound silly, but what it's doing is it's just, it's interrupting our thought patterns. That's getting us out of our own way for a minute and causing a shift in our thinking. When we just keep staying in the same narrative and not bringing awareness to our body, that disconnect is continuing to happen because when we're in that hyper arousal, there is typically a disconnect between the mind and the body. And so when we can consciously ask ourselves, you know, where do I feel this in my system? It allows that connection to come back online, which is actually really powerful and beneficial. Number six, <laughs> this one, this one, like I just said, is hard to do sometimes, but it is to ask yourself what you need. I know sometimes when people ask me what I need or ask myself what I need in that moment, it can make everything worse, especially when your answer is, I don't know. That's when we get to be detectives. We have to be gentle with ourselves and be like, okay, let's run through the list. Halt is an example used all the time. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Obviously, you know you're angry, but are you hungry? Have you eaten anything? Have you nourished your body? Sometimes that can help reset our nervous system. Are you tired? Did you get a good sleep? Are you overworking? Are you stressed out? Do you have zero capacity? Are the kids driving you nuts? Is work driving you nuts? Is your partner driving you nuts? Is everything in tandem driving you nuts? Are you hydrated? Have you done anything to fill your heart and your cup lately? Are you overpouring of yourself? Do you need a workout? Do you need a hug? Sometimes just going through the list and trying something. If we don't know what we need, sometimes it's important to just, okay, I know whenever I go for a walk, it makes me feel better. Even in that moment, if you're like, F that, I don't wanna go for a walk. Sometimes when we can just force ourselves to do it, it can make us feel better. So I would ask yourself proactively when you're not in a state of hyper arousal or hypo arousal, what you might need in those moments. I know for me, a lot of times when I'm in my head or when I'm overwhelmed, it's because I'm in my head. And as I started this episode about, I've been very hyper-focused on how I view myself lately. And I know that a lot of times when I'm in that state, it's because I'm overwhelmed or I'm telling myself something negative about myself. And so I know in those moments, I often need reassurance. I need a hug. I need to be told that I'm loved. I need to go find the mirror and look at myself and tell myself that it's okay. I know that those are things that I need in those moments, but that wasn't always the case. There was times where I'm just like, I have no idea. Get curious about it. Be a detective for yourself. And again, maybe working with a mental health professional is gonna be helpful for you on this. And number seven, last but not least, acknowledge that these things happen, sometimes out of our control, but how we respond to it is our responsibility. One thing I say all the time is it's an explanation, not an excuse. Anger is an explanation for something. It, it's trying to communicate something, but it's not an excuse to pose harm, to pose harm to others, to say mean things, to lash out, to use a mean tone. It's not an excuse. But validating that these things happen for a reason and we're gonna feel anger, it's a part of our physiological makeup to feel anger or we wouldn't have that emotional capacity in the first place. We're supposed to feel anger. It's actually a very healthy emotion to feel but how we feel it is what's gonna dictate the ripple effect of that. Think of the times where you've maybe been angry and you're like a loose cannon. That then has repercussions you have to deal with later. So getting, building a closer relationship with that feeling, with that sensation and learning the ways in which you can support yourself when you're in that heightened state is one of the best things that we can do. But I want you to know that you're a human and it's okay to feel those emotions. It's okay to feel all of our emotions just as much as we celebrate being happy. Not that we need to celebrate being angry, 
but I think it's validating that it's just as normal and important as feeling happy. So I hope you guys enjoyed these seven ways to support yourself when you're in a hyper arousal, when you're in a triggered, angry, just off state. I know that it's hard in those moments to tend to ourselves and I know that it just seems like they take over like a tsunami. But having these tips and tools and tricks and being mindful of them in those moments that it will pass, it is gonna pass, it's trying to communicate something to you, I think just helps us have a little more self-compassion and a little more self-love for ourselves. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm so grateful to have you here. If you are tuning back in, welcome back. So grateful to have you here. It would mean the world to me if you guys can share this with someone that you know and you think would enjoy this. If you could leave a review, that also just helps me a ton. So thank you guys so, so, so much. And I look forward to chatting with you all next week. Bye, you guys.